And now, my interview with Congressman Tom Malinowski from New Jersey's 7th Congressional District. Congressman, I really appreciate the time. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Happy to be here. We were supposed to do this yesterday. Uh, we're, I should point out that we're recording this on Wednesday, uh, so we're a couple of days early from airing. Um, and that's important in case something happens, so we can, we can both have some, some cover on that. You said yesterday uh, the reason you gave was that you really wanted to dig in to this HEROES bill, the new um, coronavirus supplement bill. What have you found? Do you like it? I do. It, it does exactly what we need to do right now to give ourselves a bit more time to mount the public health response with testing and contact tracing that is the key to getting out of this crisis. Um, we've told the American people, we've told the business community that we have to put the, the economy on life support until it's safe for us to resume normal life. And that requires us to make it economically possible for people to survive. Um, and that's what we're doing in this bill. Uh, one of the most important parts of it, which we really didn't do adequately in the last few bills, is that we're helping our state and local governments survive a moment in which their revenues are completely drying up. Um, in my congressional district, I've got 75 small towns, um, six counties, every single one of them, whether they're led by Republicans or Democrats, is saying the same thing. We, we cannot survive without some relief because taxes are drying up. We can't pay the firefighters and the cops and the school teachers. We're not gonna be able to have the summer programs. Uh, we're gonna to have to close the parks. We, can, we just cannot sustain the normal level of service unless we get some relief from the federal government. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna provide that in this bill. One of the reasons Mitch McConnell has said the bill will be dead on arrival in the Senate is exactly for the funding for the states. He claims that there will be some states across the country that had financial problems before COVID-19, and it's not our responsibility to make that right. What do you say to that? I, I, I absolutely agree. It's this, and that's not what this bill does. This is not about helping states deal with pre-existing financial problems. This is only to help pay for expenses related to fighting the coronavirus and revenues that are lost because of the coronavirus. One of the other criticisms I've been hearing, especially from Republicans, is that there's a lot of stuff in this bill that has nothing to do with the coronavirus. That's one criticism. Another one is that there's only $10 billion for small businesses and the other the small business uh, money from the past stimulus bills has already dried up. How do you, is that a concern of yours? In fact, I favored replacing the small business program we currently have with something much simpler, much more automatic, something that would run through the Internal Revenue Service, which already has all the information um, that it needs from small businesses, how many employees do they have, what their earnings were last year, so that our mom and pop shops don't have to wait in line uh, in, uh, with the banks to get this money. Um, so we're definitely going to extend that, along with the unemployment compensation and the stimulus payments directly uh, to, uh, to individuals. One thing that's not in there that I think many in New Jersey were hoping for and the president was pushing is uh, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, are you disappointed by that? Uh, no, because I'm confident that we're going to get to that. Uh, the reason it's not in this bill is that we are still focused on stabilizing the economy, on keeping it on life support, as I mentioned before. We're not yet at a point where we can really stimulate the economy. Uh, when we get to that point, and I hope that it's fairly soon, we believe in the House, I strongly believe that the foundation of our economic recovery will be huge investments in our country's infrastructure, fixing our highways and roads, fixing the bridges and tunnels, um, investing in our railways, building the gateway tunnel for New Jersey and other major projects of national significance around the country and modernizing our transportation system as we as we move towards a cleaner energy future. That's the opportunity here. In January, we actually unveiled in the House 
our blueprint for how to do that. So we did that before the coronavirus, um, and we fully intend uh, to pass that bill in the House uh, once we get to the recovery stage. And I hope that President Trump, I, in fact, I believe that based on what he said, he, he shares that vision. And uh, if so, then we're just negotiating over details. Uh, you'll be back in Washington on Friday. But why this extended recess when you have so many people that have to go to work every day and, and face this and you have the Senate back? It, hasn't that been a bad look for the House? I have, I have been uh, extremely annoying in pressing our leadership in the House to move towards remote voting procedures, remote hearings, using this technology that you and I are using to do the normal work of the House. Uh, it's absolutely true. We have been working extremely hard. We've passed uh, some of the, the, the biggest, most comprehensive, and yes, most expensive bills in the history of the United States in the last two months. We're working from home, just like many other Americans are working from home. One of the good things we're doing on Fridays, we are passing in the House a change in the rules to allow us to use remote procedures. We should have done it a couple of months ago. I was pushing Nancy Pelosi on this. Finally, we're doing it. And that means starting on Friday, from that point on, uh, whether we are physically in Washington or not, people will get to see us doing the things that we normally do when we are in Washington. I want to switch to uh, politics just a little bit because sure. it sounds like for the primary coming up and, and possibly for the election, there could be mail-in ballots and, that everybody has to do when they go to vote uh, in New Jersey. Are you for that? New Jersey already gives every one of our citizens the option to vote by mail. What I've been fighting for is to make sure every state gives its citizens that same opportunity. We saw what happened in Wisconsin, it was terrible. In the United States of America, nobody should be forced to choose between their right to vote and their right to life. And if this epidemic is still a problem in some of our states in November, the only protection voters will have is the freedom, the ability to choose to vote by mail. And not every state allows that. So actually in this bill, we include a mandate. Every state has got to do basically what New Jersey does, allow people to vote by mail, and we provide some money to help them make that transition because you've got to start changing your systems now and preparing for that eventuality. Is it difficult to campaign during this? How have you, have you, how have you managed? You, you know, I'm, whether, it were, whether it was easy or not, I, I wouldn't really be focused on campaigning right now with 20% uh, unemployment and more than 9,000 of our fellow New Jerseyans having lost their lives. Uh, to this epidemic. I've been focused on trying to serve my constituents. All of my legislative staff now are pretty much full-time helping my constituents get small business loans and get unemployment insurance, all the things that we have promised them. And, and that's all I have time to do between that and passing these bills. It was great to talk to you. I, I thank you so much for being so gracious with your time. Of course, thank you, anytime. That was Democratic Congressman Tom Malinowski from New Jersey's 7th Congressional District.